Hola mi gente, Ms. McIntyre's here. Welcome, welcome back. So happy August. I know I'm a little late, but better late than never. And I just wanted to come and quickly tell you all the books that I'm reading this month. Got some really good ones, so let's get into it. Our first book is actually a book that I'm doing a buddy read, a summer buddy read, along with Zakia's Lit Life over on Instagram Live. And that one is Giovanni's Room by the one and only Mr. James Baldwin, whose birthday we just celebrated this month. So Zakia's Lit Life and I will be discussing this on Thursday, August 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time over on Instagram Live, so be sure to check it out now. Let's get into what the book is about. James Baldwin's groundbreaking novel debut about love and the fear of love is set among the bohemian bars and nightclubs of 1950s Paris. David is a young American expatriate who has just proposed marriage to his girlfriend, Hella. While she is away on a trip, David meets a bartender named Giovanni to whom he is drawn in spite of himself. Soon, the two are spending the night in Giovanni's curtainless room, which he keeps dark to protect their privacy. But Hella's return to Paris brings the affair to a crisis, one that rapidly spirals into tragedy. Caught between his repressed desires and conventional morality, David struggles for self-knowledge during one long, dark night, the night which is leading me to the most terrible morning of my life. With sharp pro with sharp probing insight, Giovanni's room tells an impassioned, deeply moving story that lays bare the unspoken complexities of the human heart. That is Giovanni's room. Excited for the buddy read and to be able to discuss it. This has been on my TBR for much longer than I care to share, so I'm excited to finally get it off. Next we have, it says three African American classics, which it is, but we're only going to be reading one at this time, and that is The Soul of Black Folk by W.E.B. Du Bois. And that one, ugh, so excited to read it. If you saw it in another video, I said that this was on my TBR. I'm just getting these books off of my TBR, okay? I'm proud of me, proud of me. So we have it by Mr. Du Bois, or Du Bois, however you choose to say it. And essentially this is about life in black America after the end of the Civil War, who was impacted, what changes occurred, how did development happen? What was halted? What didn't occur? It's a number of essays that he wrote compiled into a book that came out in 1903. And I'm really, really extremely excited to check it out and get into it and to read it with all of y'all. So I'll be discussing it here. Also, if you're a part of Narrative with a K, K-N-A-R-R-A-T-I-V-E, Narrative, um, I've actually just started a group discussion over there as well. So we're going to be discussing this via Zoom on the last Thursday of this month. So if anyone needs that information, let me know. But I'm super excited for this. The next book up is The Prophets by the one and only Robert Jones Jr., also known as the son of Baldwin over on Instagram. And this book is about, the short statement is, a singular and stunning debut novel about the forbidden union between two enslaved young men on a deep south plantation, the refuge they find in each other, and the betrayal that threatens their existence. And here's the longer one. Isaiah was Samuel's, and Samuel was Isaiah's. That was the way it was since the beginning, and the way it was to be until the end. In the barn, they tended to the animals, but also to each other, transforming the hollowed out shed into a place of sanctuary, a source of intimacy and hope in a world ruled by vicious masters. But when an older man, a fellow slave, seeks to gain favor by preaching the master's gospel on the plantation, the enslaved begin to turn on their own. Isaiah and Samuel's love, which was once so simple, is seen as sinful and a clear danger to the plantation's harmony. And that is what this is about. Again, another book that has been on my TBR for a while. This is a newer release, so it hasn't been on as long as the other ones. But I'm really excited to get this off of my TBR. Super excited to review it here. I just have heard really good things about this book. So I am hoping that it is as dynamic as I have heard. We shall see. 
finally, if you saw my live video, I've decided that once a month or whenever I'm inspired, maybe more, but at least once a month, I'm going to do a live video where I discuss something that is smaller than a full book. So it could be a comic book, it could be an essay, it could be a play, it could be an anthology that I'm breaking up into smaller portions. We shall see. I'm thinking about doing something really, really special with the black book. Not sure if you all have it or have read it, but if I decide to do that, I'll be doing that via live videos once a month as well, at least. So that will be forthcoming. So for this month, I've decided to review a comic book. Again, something on my TBR that's been there for a long time that I once started but didn't finish. So I'm gonna come back to it and review it via a live video. And really I want it to be more of a discussion. So I would like for you all to read it and join me. And that book is God Shaper. So just look at the cover. Isn't it stunning? And it's by Simon Spurrier and Jonas Goonface. I may have not said those correctly, but it's just stunning. It was one of those that I picked up in the comic book store a while ago. And usually if I'm in a comic book store, I'll look at the illustrations, I'll flip it open, I'll read, see if anything grabs me. And this one really did. And the attendant there just said really great things about this. So of course, I'm excited to read it and discuss it. Let's figure out what it's about though. So it says, reach out and touch faith. In 1958, the laws of physics stopped working, but an alternative quickly appeared. People found that they each had their own personal God, a divine companion to take the place of electricity, combustion, transport, and money. Varying in shape, size, and power, these guardian deities changed everything. But Ane is a man without a God, and he's not alone. Men and women like here, him are God shapers born godless but with the ability to mold and shape the gods of others paired with bud a friendly god without a human and they crosses america seeking food shelter and the next paying gig but despite their attempts to avoid trouble and they and bud stumble up, stumble upon a mystery that will have lasting ramifications for man and god alike so that is what this is about Actually, I'm looking here. So the writer, um, Simon Spurrier, wrote The Spire and X-Men Legacy. So that should be really good and really interesting. I'm a big fan of X-Men. I'm a, also, I'm just a Marvel person. I really enjoy Marvel. So I'm excited to see what will be done here. But yeah, these are the books that I'm reading this month. This will be coming up soon. I'll post it at least a day before to let you all know that I will be going live to discuss it. It'll probably be the third Saturday of this month, but we shall see. So those are the books for me. I hope you all read them. I hope that you join. If you've read them, any of them already, let me know in the comment section down below. Would love to discuss it with you all. And as always, I'm Ms. Malcolm Hughes, one who believes that books are sometimes better than people. And until the next one, please remember to give time time, to be kind to each other, and to have the best day of your life on purpose. Agabo. Also, for those of you inquiring, I do still have buttons, my Ms. Malcolm Hughes pins, and the details on how to get those are below. Oh.